Shannon has had his best season so far as head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. They enter this game at 9-3. and three. And they head into the Florida Citrus Bowl Stadium on a cool night in Orlando to take on the power of Wisconsin of the Big Ten and their offensive player of the year, John Clay. It's been a fun time for the Badgers and the Hurricanes, but now the fun is over. It's time to circle the wagons as the ACC and the Big Ten clash. ESPN's college football primetime brings us to the Champ Sports Bowl in Orlando. Cool, clear night, and the Miami Hurricanes haven't played a bowl game in their home state in almost six years. Tonight, they get their chance as they take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Happy holidays. Welcome to Orlando, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler along with Todd Blackledge. Partner, you and I have been around here for about three days now. And in the land of theme parks, Disney theme parks, the theme so far for these two teams is let's go get number 10 on the you season. Know, you know what? 10 is only one more than nine, both these teams with nine wins. But it's huge because that double-digit win sounds better and looks better to potential recruits that both these teams are pursuing. To alumni and donors of both these schools and it adds more juice and motivation to the off-season conditioning program so winning the 10th game is very very significant for both these teams Wisconsin hasn't beaten a ranked team this year and they hope that would propel them maybe into the preseason top 15 next year same thing for Miami you talk about preseason next year I would think a guy on the short list for the preseason player of the year in the ACC is in this game yeah. and a guy that's already a player of the year for the Wisconsin Badgers is in this game two very talented sophomores for Wisconsin their tailback John Clay, a big, powerful downhill runner who was really on a roll at the end of the season, averaged 136 yards per game and scored nine touchdowns. Miami's quarterback, Ja'Cory Harris, a guy who has great poise. He has tremendous arm talent. He can make any throw you want. Sometimes he trusts his arm a little bit too much and throws it where he shouldn't, has had some problems with interceptions, but when he takes care of the football, he is as good as anybody in the country at the quarterback position. Both teams come in having one four their last five. Let's go down a third member of our team on the field is Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Todd, you said Ja'Cory Harris is pretty good and he's even better when he has some protection up front. That may be an issue tonight with the new left tackle, especially because Wisconsin's defensive front is very good. O'Brien Schofield, their end, is second in the country in tackles for loss with 22. And oh, you better know where number 44 is. That's Chris Borland, a linebacker. This kid does it all. He's a true freshman. He has an interception this year. A It's a clear night, but it is chilly. 49 degrees. Yesterday, the winds were very strong. Thankfully, they have died down, or the kicking game would have been a problem tonight for both teams. Red Bielema, his fourth year, as I mentioned, as head coach. His first two years, 21 and 5. He won 12 games in his rookie season as the head coach in Madison. Taking over for Barry Alvarez, the Hall of Famer, who will go in the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame later this week. Randy Shannon, been with his program for more than 20 years as a player, assistant, and now head coach in his third season. This is his best year so far with nine wins. Great crowd. Everybody revved up. As the Wisconsin Badgers of the Big Ten, their losses to two BCS teams in Ohio State, and Iowa, and then a heartbreaker in the Big Ten finale to Northwestern. Miami, they lost in overtime to Clemson. Clemson paid, played in the ACC championship game. They beat Georgia Tech, the ACC champs. Their other two setbacks, Virginia Tech and North Carolina. Miami won the toss. They want the football. Welch to kick. Greg Cooper and Mike James back deep for Miami. Here we go. Cooper will take it at the four. And it's an end around coming the other way. Miami with a little razzle dazzle right off the bat. Sam Shields might take it. He's going. Touchdown. In the back. Number 38 on the receiving team. That penalty is 10 yards. 
first down. Take it back. Corey. Those flags were down at about yeah. the 11-yard line. Corey Nelms is the guy who's getting an earful right now from Randy Shannon. Sam Shields is the fastest guy on the Miami team. Boy, that couldn't have been it, was it? It had to happen later on. I think it had to happen later towards the end of the play. Right. Right there. Right there. And, and it was the, unnecessary. At about, the, at about the six yard yeah. line, it looked like. Shields was, was five yards ahead of that defender, and he's the fastest guy in the Miami team. Wow. So what would have been a 97 yard touchdown is at the 16 yard line. They might get in one snap anyway. They do. Touchdown. First, you don't succeed, or you have a penalty. <laughs> Give it to Greg Cooper. He gets a nice block on the outside by Leonard Hankerson, his wide receiver. Now, does he step out of bounds before he gets to the pylon or not? Not there. Nope. Not there. <laughs> Extra point. Matt Bosher in to try to make it 7-0 Miami. And does. <laughs> well, we had fireworks right after the national anthem or during, and we have fireworks in the first 20 some seconds of the Champ Sports Bowl. Cooper for the touchdown. 7 0 Canes. Greg Cooper with a 16 yard touchdown after what would have been a kick return for a score. Here's another look at a split screen. It appears that his knee might have been down at the one yard line. And. Those are from two different angles at the exact same time. And then he falls into the pylon on the tackle at the goal line. It's Start. academic right now at 7 0 Miami. So Matt Bosher will tee it up. And that's one of those deals I look at. I say the, the, the kickoff return was so well conceived and so well executed. And they get the cheap penalty yeah. that takes the touchdown away. You know what? They deserve a touchdown there. So two exciting plays already. Let's see if Wisconsin's got an answer. David Gilray back deep for the Badgers. You see Miami in unique uniforms tonight. All white, but they mix their colors of orange and green even on their shoes. One green, one orange. Gilray from the three. Got out maybe to the 23. Ray Ray Armstrong made the tackle. So Wisconsin a little bit shell-shocked in the opening 20 seconds. Scott Tolzien takes the field. Quarterback was a question mark coming into the season for the Badgers. This kid's answered the call pretty well. It really has, and he was kind of not expected to be in the hunt. You know, when the whole thing started in August, he was the third-team guy. They had a talented freshman they were talking about, Dustin Shearer, the senior who had finished the year last year. But Tolzien is the guy who came out of the pack and uh, really played well. Play. Cuts outside. Big gainer to stiff arm on first down as he got it out. For five or six before Demarcus Van Dyke made the stop. Let's take a look at Wisconsin's offense in their starting lineup. And as always, a big group with Karimi and Frederick, Moffitt, Zietler, and Oglesby. They blind out the sun, even though the sun's not shining. Clay, the player of the year in the conference, tune and Gilreath the wideouts, and really two very talented tight ends, especially Garrett Graham, who's the all Big Ten tight end. Second down at four. Play again. Work in the middle of that Miami defense, and he's very close to the first down. Speaking of which, take a look at the Canes. They'll rotate about eight guys on their defensive fronts. The one starting Smith, Holmes, Joseph, and Bailey. McCarthy and Sharpton and Ray Buchanan, the linebackers. Brandon Harris, an all-conference corner with Shields. We already saw his speed. Phillips and Telemac, the safeties. First down is where Wisconsin has gotten a lot of big plays out of their passing game because of their ability to run and run play action. On first down. Play puts both hands around that football, as you saw, as he picked up about three. He's not very fumble prone. One of the most important ones he had this year, though, helped Northwestern beat Wisconsin this year. 
but he's been very careful with the football overall. He's listed as 248 pounds. He's probably over 250 at this point, but uh, he's wide. I mean, he is thick, oh, man. you know, and then you think about tackling him when he gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. That is a real load coming at you. Second down and eight. Colzine, his first throw. Quickly with a tight end short of the first down, but got it to Garrett Graham. Let's take a look at our impact players tonight. Garrett Graham right on cue. Seven touchdown receptions to lead the team. A rather little used wide receiver, but keep your eye on this kid tonight. The freshman, Craig Appleton. Defensively for Miami, Allen Bailey. He'll put pressure on Tolzien tonight. Leads the team in sacks and tackles for loss. Gilreath in motion. In the shotgun is Tolzien. Has time. Running out of it. Down he goes. That just took too long. Maybe it's a coverage sack. Maybe Tolzien just couldn't find a guy in that mass of humanity. But he goes down for a big loss, and Wisconsin will have to punt. I think Miami is pretty confident of their matchups on the outside against the wide receivers of Wisconsin. They, they like those matchups. Where they think there's a problem, potentially, is with the tight ends. But when it's third and ten, the tight ends aren't nearly as much of a factor as the wideouts are in your pass game. Brad Norman to punt. Collier waits on the other end. Nice kick. A beauty. He's going to let it go. And if Wisconsin can get down there, they will inside the 10-yard line. Well, he boomed that thing. Boy, he did. And it puts Miami in a hole. 57-yard punt. Pressure got the Tolzien. We'll see if the Wisconsin defense can do its job when we come back. Miami takes over its own 8-yard line. Ja'Cory Harris has a seven-point lead to play with right now. Speaking of seven, the seven 3,000-yard passer in Miami history. On first down, leaving out across the 15-yard line, Greg Cooper. So you hear the chance of Coop from the Hurricane fans as he's had two impressive runs, a 16-yard touchdown and an eight-yarder right there. And Miami's going hurry up right off the bat. Second down, a long one. Might be a double pass here. It is wide open, but incomplete. A nice play by Devin Smith, number 10. Timed it up and came up to knock that ball away from LaRon Bird, the intended receiver. There, but Cooper doing a little bit of everything. So that's third down and short. Jabaris James in the lineup. Those two interchangeable, really. Cooper and Baby James. Cooper getting a breather. And the, J.J. takes over. The depth of the Miami skill positions is uh, pretty, pretty impressive. Wide receiver and running backs, they are very deep. James gets the call on the stretch in Wisconsin with a great defensive play by J.J. Watts. Wow. Well, you see why they were so good this year. They only averaged giving up 90 yards a game rushing, eighth in the nation. And Watts gets great penetration. He beats the tight end and the tackle. Orlando Franklin gets right into the backfield to get to the legs of Javaris James. Just an outstanding play by J.J. Watts. And now Matt Bosher's got a kick from his own end zone. The dual kicker, both the place kicker and the punter for the Canes. Bosher handled a bad snap. Gilreath has to run up on it to make the fair catch. Great field position for the Badgers. So we check in with Holly. Well, guys, Wisconsin's left tackle, Gabe Karimi, has done all kinds of tests on that right knee. He's gotten down in his stance, he's moved it around, and he seems to be pretty comfortable right now although he's got some discomfort on the front patella area. So they're going to rewrap him up right now. They're using a different type of brace, and he's going to try to come back and play in this game. It's important because they moved their right tackle, Jake Bashir, over there to left tackle in that last series, yep. and he got blown up. That caused the sack, so they need Gabe Creamy in this game right now. No doubt about that. I backfield with Wisconsin. They got everybody in tight. Would they take a shot here, though? After the short punt, pump fake. There's the shot. There's the man. Kendricks down to about the four. See, this is where we.
Wisconsin gets their big plays is on first down play action. They can go max protection. They can slip tight ends into their passing game. Kendrick was the move tight end on that play. He was in motion and then got out behind the Miami defense. Watch 84 get out behind him. They're thinking run. They came up close to the line of scrimmage and he ran right behind the linebackers for a big game. Now at first and goal at the four, you can go right back to your bulldozer offense if you choose to. And that's John Clay. Got a yard. That's about all. Clay, the ball carrier to the left side. Vernon made the stop. It'll be second down at goal, Wisconsin. Trying to tie this game up midway through the first quarter. This Miami defense has really come on down the stretch. They only allowed two rushing touchdowns in the last seven games. And over the last five games, only 96 yards a game rushing. So they have really improved as the year has gone on in stopping the run. But a challenge here with John Clay. Three tight ends in there, including Kendricks, who's the motion man. Clay trying to cut it outside. He'll coast to the corner. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Lance Kendrick made the big catch. And Lance Kendrick made the big block on the touchdown really sealed the edge for John Clay. For John Clay, a three-yard touchdown at his 17th of the year. Watch number 84 again. Come in motion and then just seal the edge for the big tailback. You had Mickey Turner the mix with Vern and Kendricks and Graham. They actually had four tight ends in there. And Clay follows his blockers beautifully to the pylon. Extra point, 7-7 seven, seven in Orlando. Good looking drive. John Clay did the final three yards as he's done so many times before this year. Now we had a one play scoring drive by the Canes. Wisconsin answers with a three play scoring drive. 7-7 seven, seven with 7-12 seven, remaining. In the first quarter, John Clay capped that three-yard scoring march. Kendricks got the 37-yard reception from Tolzien to get it close. Clay did the rest. Philip Welch to kick away. Last time, it was a long kick return for what looked like it was going to be a touchdown. This is Greg Cooper, two yards deep. And Wisconsin will bring him down as he got to the 20, and that's it. Here's a quick throw, completes. And it's going to be a first down throw to Collier. So Collier is going to get a first down after his punt return on the reception and a pickup of 12. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for Miami. We really haven't had a chance because of the quickness of these two offenses and the quick scores. Franklin, Washington, Trump, Figueroa, and Pipo. And Franklin starting for Jason Fox, who isn't going to be able to play in his final game because of an injury. Cooper and James, they'll split time. Bird and Hankerson, the wideouts. They've got three good tight ends. Epps is the starter. So first down at the 32. And around. Wisconsin had a man there, but Collier broke free from the first tackle. Borland comes over to make the stop along with Brinkley. And they picked up only about three. So Miami's pulling out all the stops with the gadget plays. They've had a double pass, an end around, an end around on the kick. Wisconsin defensively, O'Brien Schofield is a monster up there in that one defensive end spot. J.J. Watts made some big plays already in this game. J. R. McFadden, St. Jean, and Borland. Mr. Do Everything, as Holly told you about it, the linebacker spot, Brinkley, Valai, Marigus, and Smith in the secondary. Harris running out of time. Throws on the run and completes it down to the 40-yard line. Jimmy Graham, the tight end. Pick up a 16. Well, Miami has four receivers that are 6'3 or taller and three tight ends that are just as big. And Jimmy Graham, see, this is the tackle over, and they throw out of it. And Jimmy Graham is one of the extra tight ends. He's the tallest of all, 6'8", the former basketball player, and goes up and gets a rebound on this one. <laughs> that he did, an offensive rebound in this case at the 40. First down Miami. Tackle over again. Three plays in a row. Same formation. Two runs and a pass. Javaris James, positive yardage, three or four. You know, Mark Whipple, the offensive coordinator, we mentioned him, you saw him on the sideline, former head coach at UMass. 
And they actually played against Kansas State when Brett Bielema was co-defensive coordinator for Bill Schneider against Kansas State. And he ran that play all day, and those two started yelling at each other across the field. And he's like, Whip, when are you going to give that thing up? <laughs> so they've been talking about that tackle yeah. over at all the functions we've been at the last three days. It's been kind of fun watching those two interact. Well, what it does is it forces you as a defensive staff and a defensive coordinator to prepare for it, just like preparing for the, a team that runs the option. You have to spend time and make sure you know how you're going to defend it, even if you only see it a few times. Play action, Ja'Cory Harris. Oh, he's got a lot open field this time still looking to throw and now he's going to slide inside the 35. And I think that time as well had he made his decision to really put the Jets on I think he would have easily had a first down as it is good first quarter champ sports bowl in Orlando Wisconsin seven Miami seven and a one. We start the second quarter. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe from the Florida Citrus Bowl Stadium in Orlando. Tied at 7-7 between the Canes and the Badgers. And the third down at five for Miami at the Wisconsin 35. The Corey Harris just rifles it to the far side. And I don't know. There was two guys in the area, and Collier tried to take it away from Leron Bird, I think. I, I think the ball was intended for Leron Bird, and Collier dove in front of it and took away an easy completion and tried to make a hard one. I mean, Leron Bird just steps right in and catches that thing if Collier stays away from it. <laughs> Apparently didn't see his teammate out of the corner of his eye, or he would have stayed out of the way, I think, in the line of fire. As it is, Miami's going to go for it here on fourth down and five. They were pretty good on fourth down this year, nine of 17. Big play for the Wisconsin defense if they can hold here. Harris backpedaling incomplete, and the Badgers will take over. Well, they got Ja'Cory Harris a little antsy in the pocket. He, he moved out. It, it wasn't going to be a sack, but they forced him to move a little bit more out of his comfort zone, and he wasn't accurate with the throw. Watch him start to drift to his left. He feels the pressure coming and then isn't able to make an accurate throw to Travis Benjamin. So Wisconsin has an opportunity to take over. I think that's the key so far. In this game, as Ja'Cory Harris just has not been himself so far. And you're going to have that with any quarterback, especially a young one. But uh, for a guy that's thrown for over 3,100 yards and 23 touchdowns this season, he's been a little bit shaky in the opening 16 minutes. First down at the 36-yard line. Tolzien, quick drop, looks one way. Now looks for help. He's going to throw it away wisely. You know, the next Big Ten team that we'll see in this stadium in a couple days, Penn State in the Capital One game, they played their last game November 21st, and then they've had an extended period of time between then and when they'll play. But as Holly mentioned, Wisconsin played Hawaii on December the 5th. So that 23-day layoff is the shortest turnaround heading into a bowl that Wisconsin's had since 1982. So it's much easier to keep your team in sync and keep them in rhythm uh, and prepare that way. And they had two bye weeks this year uh, before Purdue and before Hawaii, and they handled it the same way. Second down at 36. Weaving his way is Clay. John Clay, the big man down the sideline all the way down inside the 15 yard line he got the rock back and he held on to it that time well take a look at travis frederick number 72 gets a big block he cuts right behind him and then a couple missed tackles again john clay you're not going to bring him down with arm tackles you better wrap him up and you better hit him below the buttocks if you want to get him on the ground. <laughs> that takes a lot of rapid. Yeah. <laughs> Down to the 12-yard line. Big smile on the big fella's face. Kendricks broke one tackle, and that's going to be it. So Wisconsin tried a little bit of razzle-dazzle with the end around of their tight end, and that didn't work. Daryl Sharpton there. Uh, this guy has really come on for the Miami defense. He finished the regular season with back-to-back -back games of 12 tackles. 
He's played all three linebacker positions in his career. He moved to the middle this spring and uh, has really blossomed here, particularly in the second half of the season. Team's leading tackler with 91 tackles and a very physical middle linebacker. Now Wisconsin's going to take a shot. They can get it down to the two-yard line with a first down. Gilreath in motion. They fake the end around. Throw to the middle to Graham. Garrett Graham, and he is very close, and now they might go for it. Wow. He well, got within a yard. A nice play. Really well designed. They fake the end around and then slip the tight end, kind of a middle tight end screen, and tried to hide him in between those linemen. Watch 89. Sells it, sells it, and then just kind of slip him the football, and you got linemen blocking downfield because the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage to the tight end. And now Wisconsin, short yardage. Third and one. John Clay back in, as you might expect, with Mickey Turner in front of him. And three tight ends. The beef package. John Clay, left side. Touchdown. Wow. Kendrick again with a huge block. Second touchdown of three yards for John Clay. Garrett Graham got him down there with the pass and now watch Kendrick come around and again get the big block right on the edge Carbon copy almost of the last one although this was a kick out block on Randy Phillips Last time he sort of sealed off that edge and now the extra point is up a knuckleball It's good and Wisconsin has its first lead of the night this guy's kind of tough to handle, especially when you got about 15 tight ends out there and six <laughs> tackles and four guards in the center, and it's 14 to 7. With Ty Blackledge and Holly Rowe, Brad Nessler with you. In the Champ Sports Bowl, where Wisconsin's got the lead now, courtesy of number 32, with two three yard touchdown runs. That one capped the 64 yard march in five plays. The big chunk of it was his, a 52 yard gallop, and Wisconsin by touchdown. Well, I'll tell you right now, it is it is critical that that guy, Ja'Cory Harris, gets it together. And he is the leader of this team, and uh, as he goes, so this Miami team goes. Down to the 10-yard line. Mike James weaving his way across the 20, out to maybe the 22, 23-yard line. Javaris James, you look from behind number five, playing tailback now. Cooper's got the touchdown tonight for Miami. Quick drop, throws over the middle, and it is complete to Collier, who's been a busy guy tonight. Miami's going to go hurry up. Wisconsin's trying to change bodies, and I don't know if anybody's going to get anything done. Harris fires complete, and it's good for a first down. Jimmy Graham, second time, the ex-basketball player turned tight ends. Got a catch. And that might be just what Ja'Cory Harris needs. Two completions in a row. This one for a first down. They'd had a couple three and outs on offense. They'd looked kind of stagnant. Maybe that's what he needed now to get into a group. They overcome second down at 19. That's pretty darn good by itself. Now to the ground game and a pickup of maybe four for Greg Cooper. Here we're in the champs. Sports Bowl with five and a half to go in the second quarter. Cooper bounced off one guy and keeps the legs driving. Got within two yards, maybe, of the first down marker. Well, Miami's going to still try to stay balanced and run the football. Again, this Wisconsin defense did something that hadn't been done very often. They they held every Big Ten team they played this year under 100 yards rushing. Hadn't oh. happened since Ohio State did it in 1998. And the first time Wisconsin's ever done it. In fact, Wofford, those pesky Terriers, the only team that went over 100 yards rushing against <laughs> Both James and Cooper in there together. Harris, play action, going deep. Got a man just too far in front. Uh, Javaris James coming out of that backfield. Boy, they had it. Yeah. A little wheel route out of the backfield and uh, got him matched up on a, a guy he wanted and just a slight overthrow by Ja'Cory Harris on that one. So close. And yet it's a punting situation for Miami.
Bosch here again to kick with Gil Reed back deep. Gil Reed immediately calls for the fair catch. Well, that's a bad punt. You know, you have a chance to pin Wisconsin back and at least make them be conservative. And Bosher kicked that thing straight up in the air. Yep. Only 30 yards in length. Canes trailing. Wisconsin on offense with a touchdown lead when we come back. Second down at seven. Here comes a blitz. Tolzien. He's got a man. Kendricks, the tight end down the sideline. Woof. Took a wicked shot. By Telemac back there, but he picked up a huge gain. So even though Garrett Graham is really the go-to guy, Lance Kendricks has been huge in this game, both as a receiver and a blocker. 23 more yards right here, Ledge. Well, watch. He goes in motion. I think Miami thinks he's going to stay in and block, but he doesn't. He releases, and nobody picks him up out of the backfield. And because of that, a short throw turns into a long gain for Wisconsin because nobody accounted for him when he came out of the backfield. Remember, Wisconsin's got all its timeouts right now. The first down working toward midfield just inside their own 45-yard line. Two, nothing to Nick so far. At least completed. Now we got one. The first down passing for Wisconsin. Uh, they're fun to watch. When they get their running game going, they put a defense back on their heels because you have to respect the run and you have to respect play action fakes. And then that quarterback gets good protection and is able to get big chunks of yardage down the field in the passing game. Remember, Nick Toon had that one almost catch on a great effort on the sideline, but ran out of real estate. This time he had plenty of room to work. And his first catch is good for 20. Wisconsin on the move just outside the 23-yard line. Tolzien play action. Waits and fires over the middle, and again it's complete. This time to John Clay. Well, it's maybe down around 46 degrees, maybe here, something like that. It's 14 in Madison. So if you're watching <laughs> back there at State Street Brats or someplace, it's it's warmer here than yeah. it is there. Third down and long, third and seven. Three wide receivers set for the Badgers trying to score here before halftime. Final minute. Colzeen, oh, that would have been a tough throw to tuck in there. There's an all-conference play by Brandon Harris. Well, and they need it. Brandon Harris, uh, he's done that all year. He led the ACC in passes defended, and he was right on the spot there, got his hand on the football and knocked it away to force a field goal attempt. Well done. Phillip Welch, 15 out of 22 on the year. He missed the first three field goals of the season, but he's gone 15 out of 19 since. This will be a 37-yard attempt to try to stretch the Badger lead. Kick on the way, heading to that O of Orlando, and it's perfect. John Clay and Wisconsin, I think, can confidently head to their locker room with the lead they've got a 17 to 7. Here's Holly. Coach Shakori Harris doesn't quite look comfortable out there. What has to happen with him to settle down? Well, as an offense, we got to start getting a chance to move the football. We're not able to run the football like we said. If we're not able to run the football, it's going to be a tough time. So we got to make some adjustments at halftime, uh, give us a chance and opportunity to get ourselves in some second, second down and three, second down and four, and convert those calls. <laughs> Miss Greg, but also we gotta depend on now JJ and uh, Damon Berry have to step up. So uh, it's gonna be a tough challenge for us, but it'll be a good challenge for us. Thank you. Uh, it's a problem that they've had all year, having to rotate tailbacks due to injury. They're gonna have to rotate them again in the second half to try to come from behind in this Champ Sports Bowl. 17-7 as we send you to the H&R Block Halftime Report. Here's Reese and the guys. And the Champ Sports Bowl in Orlando. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, Hollerow. And Wisconsin leading Miami as we're just about set to start the third quarter, 17 to 7. Miami had the first touchdown of the ball game in the opening minutes. Wisconsin was 17 unanswered points over the course of the next two quarters. And Wisconsin will have the ball first as well. Bosher will kick off. We started the game with a apparent Kickoff return for touchdown that was negated by a penalty, but Miami scored one play later. Now Wisconsin will get a kick return to open the third quarter. And it's Gil Reeves from the five. 
And Gilreath, nice return. Got out to about the 26 yard line. That's where Wisconsin will go to work. And so far, Wisconsin's been very efficient. Tolzien did have one interception, but he went 10 out of 15 for 150 yards. And quite frankly, he's outplayed yep. his uh, counterpart, yep. Ja'Cory Harris from Miami. He really has. And Wisconsin has done what they've done all year. That's be balanced on offense and be strong against the run on defense. And they shut down the Miami running game. They made him one-dimensional. And you mentioned Tolzien played solid. And they averaged almost seven yards per offensive play in that first half. And... Uh, Tolzien kept them off balance with first down passing particularly. Wisconsin can play Wisconsin football with a 10-point lead. They'll come with the end around to Gil Reith, and he's tripped up. Nice play defensively by Demarcus Van Dyke. A pickup of only about a yard. And we mentioned the balance of Wisconsin offense. There are only six teams in major college football that average at least 200 yards rushing and 200 yards passing on the season. Wisconsin's one of those six. They had 30 yards difference between the pass, 30 yards more passing than rushing, and that's total all season. You don't get it any more balanced than that. They had 89 yards from their star tailback, John Clay, in the first half, including the two three-yard touchdown runs. He's right in there at the tailback spot now and gets the call. Miami waiting for him. Only got about two. Allen Bailey made the stop. Number 57 off the bottom of the pile, probably the best of the front four of Miami. Yeah, that was a nice job by Allen Bailey coming from the backside, and uh, John Clay limping a little bit at the end of that play. Bailey came down the line of scrimmage from the backside defensive end position and made the tackle. And uh, John Clay hobbled a little bit coming to the sideline. Third down and seven. Zach Brown takes play spot in the Wisconsin backfield. You always think tight end in this situation for the Badgers with those big targets and Graham and Kendricks, who's had a big night. Tolzien got rid of it at the last second and got it to Kendricks. And it's good for a first down. Boy, you talk about the last second. Eric Moncour, who's only playing on third down in passing situations. He's battled injuries all year. He's going to get to Tolzien, but not before Scott gets it out of his hand. Wow. But that is holding it on to the very last second and then getting the first down on the throw. Kendricks has been huge tonight. That tight end spot, five catches, 102 yards career high for Lance Kendricks. And now Molly Ball with a carry. Let's see if John Clay is going to come back in or not. Again, he limped out after his second carry to start this third quarter. Ball did a nice job spelling him in the first half. A little different size guy, though. 5'11", 225, whereas John Clay is 6'1", at about 252, maybe. He's trying to stay warm over there on the sideline. Meanwhile, second down for the Badgers. Just outside their own 42-yard line. Fake it to Gilreath again. Ball cut down on the front wall by Vernon. There's a guy that's going to be pretty good. A freshman right now, 6'3", 250. Very active. And it's third down and long. Now watch him just beat Gabe Karimi. Just stands him up. That's a freshman working on a, an all-Big Ten tackle. And just you see the importance of leverage for a defensive lineman. Stayed lower than the offensive lineman. Got underneath his pads. Shed the block and then made the tackle. Third down and long. Last time they picked it up with a throw to Kendricks. That's Graham. Nick Toon to the bottom of your screen. They're going to throw a screen to Graham, a middle screen to the tight end, and that didn't work very well, and Wisconsin will have to get rid of it. Sharpton's had a nice game at middle linebacker, as he's had, Todd mentioned, back-to-back -back 12 tackle performances to end the season, and he's been a special one all season long. Second team all-conference in the ACC. Nortman, his first punt of the night was a 57-yarder that he dropped at about the 8-yard line going the other way on this field. He'd like to get more of the same uh, this attempt here in the third quarter. Not a good kick this time. Out of bounds 
at about the 28 yard line. Well, Miami trailing by 10. Ja'Cory Harris has been kind of a question mark. We'll talk with Holly about how he feels and his offense on the field when we come back. Tough night for the sophomore quarterback, Ja'Cory Harris. He's been hassled and sacked by Schofield. He's been rushed and crumpled in the pocket, losing his headgear in that case, turning his ankle, we think, on that play as he limped to the locker room. Longest play from scrimmage for Miami was his scramble right before they headed into the locker room at halftime. And his longest pass was only 16 yards, and he was third in the nation with pass plays over 25 yards coming into the game. He's going to try one here, and he throws this way over the sideline as Ryan Mallett and Case Keenum Two guys that have had as many, in this case more, 25-yard pass plays as Todd was talking about. He's slow getting up again. Holly? Well, guys, DeCorey Harris actually injured his left leg when he got sacked. Remember when his helmet popped off? He came over the sideline, was pointing to the inside of his left knee and his left ankle. At halftime, I've noticed they put on a black sleeve to give that knee some extra support, and they've heavily taped the left ankle. But that time, one of his big offensive linemen just now rolled into him again. He is definitely getting beat up a little bit tonight. I guess they're going to need more tape the way things are going right now for him. He's going to try a shovel pass, and it's incomplete. Even though Wisconsin's going to chase it down, Borland, one of the guys along with J.J. Watt that blew that one up. And here's the problem for Miami, is their backup quarterback is a true freshman, A.J. Highsmith, who was probably just going to redshirt before the season started. But they had two redshirt freshman quarterbacks that decided to transfer on the same day, a week before the season opened. That's after losing one guy yeah. to a transfer to Purdue. Right, Robert Barr transferred at the end of the bowl game last year. And so A.J. Highsmith has only been involved in about eight or ten snaps this whole season. Harris pressure coming from Borland. Throwing deep. Man out there and overshot him again. It was LaRon Burr who had a step back there. But again, Borland coming around that corner and Ja'Cory Harris. Well, that, that's a breakdown by Miami. Nobody even blocked Borland. He was lined up as a defensive end. He was on the end of the line of scrimmage. It's not even a blitz. And nobody picks him up. No back, no lineman. You can't do that. You can't turn a guy loose on the backside of your quarterback and let him hit him like Ooh. that. Rosher. And Gilreed calls fair catch. I don't know the touch to Wisconsin player. He's going to scoop it up to make sure, I guess. And now we got a little scuffle going on way back by the 10-yard line. No flags. Tough night for number 12, talking to his offensive coordinator. They got to get something straightened out or Miami's going to be in trouble. In the first half, Scott Tolzien was four of seven passing on first down. So far in the second half, they've not thrown it on first down. They've had four running plays on first down, zero pass plays. Here comes another running play. Molly Ball again in for the injured John Clay. Going to take, whoops, three Hurricanes to throw him to the Miami sideline, and he lost his hat in the process. Monty Ball, a freshman out of Wentzville, Missouri. John Settle, I think the running back coach, just about said it, ready to send John Clay in there, and now he pulls him back. Clay with a huge season, came in with almost 1,400 yards rushing. Fifth straight year, Wisconsin back has had a thousand yards or more on the ground in the 15th time in the last 17 years. Tolzien, quick throw, got it to Graham, first down. Wisconsin, as they've done so many times over the years, started strong in the beginning of their season. Rolled up to a 5-0 mark. Then came the two losses to BCS teams, back-to-back to, back to Ohio State and Iowa. Then they went on to win their next three, Purdue, Indiana, and Michigan. And then the real heartbreaker, the Big Ten finale, as they lost to Northwestern in a close one. Fifth nine-plus win season, though, in the last six years. So Brett Bielema's done a heck of a job this four years, 37 and 14, coming into this one. Here comes the heat and a blitz. And the run blitz pays off again for the Canes. Maybe a yard gain by Monty Ball. That's about it. We're down to a minute change remaining in the third quarter. Wisconsin, 17 straight points after seeing Miami score in the first minute of the ball game. 
And after last year's Champ Sports Bowl when they were throttled by Florida State, they're looking a lot better here in 09. Number 16's been a big reason. Second and six. That's Kendricks on the move again. He's been the main man. Colzine down the middle. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it really I mean, is. You know where he's going with the football, and Miami just can't find a way to stop it. And now a lot of times you get safeties covering tight ends because cornerbacks are covering wide receivers. And tonight, safeties against tight ends has been a mismatch in favor of Wisconsin. That's a great throw right there, it's too. It's a now. great throw. Low and away from the defender and a sure-handed guy on the other end. Career high and catches. And he just keeps adding to it. And have you ever had a depth chart that lists this many tight ends no, as really. Wisconsin? I mean, they just roll them through there. Well, I kiddingly said going to break. They, they have 100 tight ends and 14 tackles, two guards and a center out there blocking <laughs> for John Clay. We played three. Badgers are going to hold up four fingers and hope they can hold on for another 15 minutes. They've been very impressive so far. Head to the fourth quarter. Wisconsin leads Miami 17-7. Well, this guy's had quite a night his best game of the season probably the four touchdown performance against Michigan State but I think he'd take this one right now with that one the way his teams played through three quarters and to Corey Harris his counterpart on the other side has had an extremely rough night Wisconsin leads by 10 fourth quarter to start here with Monty Ball being dropped for a loss by Daryl Sharpton Big play to put him behind the chains on this first play of the fourth quarter. Sharpton takes a great angle to the football. Nobody's able to get a, a hat on him, and he gets the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And that was a much-needed play for the Miami defense. This ball control offense of Wisconsin with the ability to wear you down as a defense. They've run 21 more plays than Miami in the ball game and held the ball for fi almost 15 more minutes. They've got 10 minute advantage in the second half alone. Oh. Tolzine oh. getting some pressure, throws it down to Graham, and he lost the ball. I think Miami's got it in the end zone, they do. Randy Phillips might be the guy there in that pile. But again, the tight end was open. Graham trying to get the extra yardage, took a shot. And about the four-yard line, and the ball came out. Boy, what a huge break for Miami, because Garrett Graham ran a great route on the best cover guy for Miami. He was one-on-one -on, -one on Brandon Harris, number one, and beat him badly. on the field is that the football was fumbled from the field of play into the end zone, recovered by Miami. The result of the play is a touchback. First down. The tight ends have been huge. This one would have been a big one, too. Maybe even a touchdown, but a great play by the two defensive backs. One to strip it, one to cover it. Miami's got it back. Here, it's Wisconsin trying to win the champ sports bowl. They're up by 10 with 14-10 to go, but Miami's got it back courtesy yeah. of that turnover. And I'll tell you what, that may have been the play of the game for Miami because another touchdown there for Wisconsin, the way their defense is playing, might have been lights out for Miami. But a huge play by Brandon Harris. Miami will try it on the ground to Barry. Uh, maybe to the 23 where Javery McFadden made the stop. Let's go back to the fumble again. Well, here's Brandon Harris, and he's going to work on Garrett Graham, who's going to come out of the backfield and beat him on the route. But watch Brandon Harris do what an all-conference player does. He's beat on the route. He's beat on the play. So he does something at the end. He gets the strip, knocks the ball out, and then it's recovered in the end zone for a touchback. Harris didn't put his head down after he got beat. He went and did something about it and made possibly the play of the game for Miami. DeCorey Harris batted down by J.J. Watt. 
Boy, J.J.'s had that 6'6", 287-pound yeah. frame in the way all night, it seems like. These two defensive ends are for real. And Schofield and Watts combined coming into the night, 36 tackles for loss behind the line of scrimmage, the highest combination of any pair in the country. And they uh, they are very much in the mind and in the uh, in the eyes of Ja'Cory Harris tonight. Miami only one out of eight of their third down conversions after being number two in the ACC in that capacity in the regular season. Harris pressured again. Almost went down. Boy, he will. <laughs> Boyle's got him again. The little engine that could Chris Borland, a little bit of everything for the Wisconsin Badgers this year. Well, he's such a great effort guy. He comes off the edge. He does a nice spin move. He gets knocked down, but the play's not over for him. I mean, some guys might stay on the ground. Not this guy. Chris Borland is back up off the ground, and he gets the sack. His fifth of the year. He also had five forced fumbles this year, which was sixth in the country, tied for sixth. And it forces a punt again by Bosher. That Bosher been back by his own goal line all night. Oh, he got a nice one out of here that time, though. Fair catch way back at the 34-yard line by Gilry. So third down again and eight. This is when Kendricks has been the star most of the night. This time it's his counterpart. Look at him hold that ball this yeah. time. Graham <laughs> rambles all the way down to the 43-yard line. These two tight ends uh, have been a nightmare for Miami. Whether it's against a linebacker or whether it's against a safety, they have owned the Miami defense. This time in the middle of the zone defense, and then watch him wrap up as Colin McCarthy is going to try to rip the ball out. Catches it in the middle of the field, and then both hands on the football to keep from losing it like he did the last time they were down in the red zone. Now Wisconsin can go back to using clock at the 10 minute mark if that's what they choose for the first down in Miami territory. Play back to the line of scrimmage maybe a yard. You know you think about Wisconsin over the years all the great backs the thousand yard backs the tight ends they started with Mike Rohn back in like the mid 90s and they came up through more of the H back kind of guy like Travis Beckham yeah. last year. Now they got one of each. They got that big guy like yeah. Graham and then they got Kendricks that's running all over the field on crossing pattern. Yeah I'll tell you they're impressive. I mean uh, they are they know how to find seams in the zone defense. They know how to get separation versus man coverage and they're sure handed. Tolzien's got 18 completions 13 to tight ends. You gotta love that. Here comes the pressure off the corner. Tolzien going down to tune and incomplete. Sam Shields was covered. Here's a shovel pass. That ball. Oops. Almost lost it at the end of the play, but he was down. Randy Phillips cut him down as he was maybe two yards shy of the first down. And now we're under nine minutes. Wisconsin time of possession you know even in that game they lost to Ohio State this year they had the ball for about 40 yeah. minutes they just couldn't do anything with it well they totally shut down Ohio State they outgained them by over 150 yards in the game and uh, Ohio State had three non offensive touchdowns in that game two interceptions returned for a touchdown and a kickoff return to beat them they actually had the ball just 43 minutes in that game Norman Hangs it up there. Wisconsin's going to camp under it. Inside the five again. Special teams. At least that guy's been pretty special tonight, hadn't he? Punting the football. Third punt dropped inside the 10 by Nortman. Getting help from his friends. Wisconsin, 820 away from winning this game. Not a spot you want to start your offense as Damian Berry standing in the end zone. Hurricanes will re-huddle in that end zone. And after the great punt, working from their own one yard line down 10 with 820 to play and Corey Harris looks like he's changing things up at the line he hasn't done much of that tonight Damian Barry trying to get to the edge he did Barry nice Damian run all the way out to the 25 and another 15 down. way out 
out of bounds on the Wisconsin sideline. Niles Brinkley showed some frustration. First he gave up the edge and then he added to the problem by getting the late hit out of bounds after the play. He gave up contain and then he got 15 more. Well first of all Ja'Cory Harris late into the play clock changed the play. And it goes to the outside run and Damian Berry breaks contain. Brinkley lost contain and at the end of the play here's the penalty. So it was a nice change at the line of scrimmage by Ja'Cory Harris and then Damian Berry with a nice run out and out away from their end zone. And again, I go back to the play that Brandon Harris made with the strip to stop another touchdown from Wisconsin. There's eight minutes left, and they're only down 10. If Miami could get a score, this game is far from being over, only down 10. Harris on first down. Wanted to go deep, ball is out. Wisconsin's got it. And it's J.J. Watt. Staley might have been the guy that got a hand on it in that cramped pocket. I think it was Schofield that first closed the pocket. I mean, these two ends have been a great tandem tonight. Here's Schofield coming for the sack. Staley's there also. The ball comes out right at the feet of J.J. Watt, and he says, I guess I'll fall on it. Boy, this Miami offensive line has had a very difficult time with the front of the Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah. Uh, this defense has been a legitimate defense tonight. They, they've had good numbers all year, 18th in the nation in total defense, and they have really throttled a very explosive Miami offense tonight. So even though it seemed because Miami has sputtered so badly, that's actually their first turnover. But the fourth sack by Wisconsin gives them the ball back with 7.49 to play. And right back in command now, up by 10, because they've got their hands on the football. And here's John Clay. Well, he was about one guy away from hurtling over everybody and heading to the end zone. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, the Miami fans have started booing this Miami offensive line, and they have been trying everything. Just a reminder, their left tackle is out. So Orlando Franklin had to slide to left tackle. Brandon Washington, a freshman, was at left guard. He was getting handled, so they made a change. They brought in Harland Gunn, the right guard, who's a sophomore, a little more experienced, put him at left guard and let Joel Figueroa, who's out of eight starts, go to right guard. That hasn't worked. Guys, they're trying to do everything they can over here. Nothing seems to work tonight. Holly sounds like the offensive line coach down there, doesn't she? Yeah, it's been a mismatch and a mismatch tonight as well. Clay, first down, almost broke another one out to the 20. You know, just to follow up on the point that Holly made, when they made the switch in the last regular season game, when Jason Fox was out and they moved Franklin out to left tackle and Washington into left guard, they played against a good defense in South Florida, but they ran the football. They yep. had 240 yards rushing against South Florida. They've not been able to run the ball at all tonight against Wisconsin, and they, when they got one-dimensionalized and had to throw, the Wisconsin defensive front took control of the game. And they weren't running well even before Greg Cooper got hurt, right. though he had the first touchdown of the game on a 16-yard gallop. That's the only points the Canes have been able to put up. Six and a half to go now. Wisconsin on the drive. Play with both hands around that football again, just driving guys for about four more yards. To Corey Harris, Schofield getting him there. Borland that time. Then in the pile at the end of a scramble. Lost his helmet on this one. We think that's where he hurt his ankle. Then he got blasted again trying to get a ball downfield. I mean, it's just been one thing after the other tonight for DeCorey Harris. There will be better nights, young man. We know that because we've seen them from you already, but tonight's not one of them. Well, no quarterback likes pressure. I mean, that, you can go right down the line at any level of football. No quarter like, quarterback likes to be harassed and likes to be knocked on the ground every time you throw the football. And for DeCorey Harris, he was never able to get in a groove tonight because of the constant pressure of this Wisconsin defense. Coming up with Word Down, Sports Center will follow us. We'll be on ESPN News for a post-game extra. ESPN360.com has a trophy ceremony. Holly will be in on that live. It's all coming up when we are finished here in about five minutes and change. Uh, Scott Tolzien has had an excellent night. One pass that was batted in the air and intercepted. Otherwise, uh, he's been the model of efficiency at quarterback for Wisconsin. 
Well, for a position that they were wondering about at the beginning of the season, they don't have to wonder going into next year with him. Here he is. Uh, that keeper and down to about the 11 yard line. Now, I'll tell you, he, he's been impressive tonight. I mean, he's a very conscientious guy. You know, his offensive coordinator, Paul Chris, said up until this year, he's kind of had almost to a fault has been a perfectionist. You know, wants to do everything right and, and wants to make sure everything is, is in order. And this year, he kind of just relaxed a little bit more and started to let things happen and uh, played a little bit more relaxed. And that's how he won the job in the summer and uh, has gotten better and better as the year has gone on. Philip Welch going to come in and try to make it 20 to 7. 29 yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark. Low snap. The holder did a nice job in getting up there. Chris Maragos to set it up for him. Welch knocks it home. Four minutes left. Wisconsin now has stretched its lead to 13. For some of our fans. Some young fans, some old fans, some happy Wisconsin fans right there. Philip Welch, the kickoff, not so happy on the uh, Miami section. Well, only 67 yards of offense in the second half for Miami. Three first downs, a turnover, a dominant performance by this Wisconsin team. Mike James at about the two yard line. Barring a long kick return, it's going to be a long way back for Miami. They don't get it. They got it only the 20, and Chris Maragos, one of the captains, made the stop. Well, Miami started 2-0. They had a really tough schedule. Beat Florida State in the game we did, then Georgia Tech. Then they got hammered by Virginia Tech. Three straight wins, though. Oklahoma, FAMU, and UCF. Then a couple of losses. Killers in overtime to Clemson in that North Carolina game where Ja'Cory Harris had his worst game of the year. Nonetheless, first nine-win season since 05 and the best season so far for Randy Shannon but uh, unfortunately it looks like it's going to end on a sour note with a loss to Wisconsin unless something drastic happens. Maragos was injured on that play on the tackle on the kick coverage and uh, Chris an interesting story transferred and walked on at Wisconsin and now he's one of the four captains and one of the leaders of the defense. And that's his family. The, call him the 21 Club. There's about 50 of them, all wearing 21 jerseys, and uh, obviously anxiously watching uh, what's going to go on here. Look of concern on moms and dads and brothers and Holly. Well, guys, you know, they have come from all over the United States, as well as Italy, these members of the 21 Club. They have 50 people here tonight. They've come from Michigan, Italy, Wisconsin, Florida. They all came to honor this young man who, as you said, started out as a walk-on at Western Michigan at wide receiver, then came to Wisconsin. He consulted with Jim Leonard, another famous walk-on from the Badgers' great history, and really worked his way into this team. This is just his first full season as a starter. He was a wide receiver, and not only that, he was voted a team captain this year. This man has truly made a tremendous career for himself at Wisconsin, all through effort and hard work. Had the interception in overtime against Fresno State that ended that game. Couple interceptions, uh, interceptions against uh, Michigan State led the club in that capacity, and he's okay. He's a tough guy. Walked off on his own. Just under four minutes to play. Pressure coming on Harris. Crossing pattern. Nice open field tackle. <laughs> wow. By O'Brien Schofield. It's a 250-pound senior out of Great Lakes, Illinois. Watch this play. Yeah, one of the few times he doesn't rush the passer. He drops into coverage and makes the tackle for no, uh, no big gain. A very little gain. Plays like a linebacker on that play. Consensus first team all Big Ten. O'Brien Schofield. Another one of the captains, he and Maragos on the defense. And we're down at 3.26 as they move the chains. Four wideouts for Ja'Cory Harris. 
trying to make something happen to possibly get back in the game. And that won't be it. Little jump pass attempted to Javaris James, way short. You know, you want to win a game like this for both of these teams. We, we've already said about winning your 10th game, having momentum going into your offseason program, going into next spring. Both these teams have a lot of good young players coming back. I mean, Miami is a very talented young football team that will be good again next year. And you want to take that step this year, and Wisconsin, it looks like they're going to take that final step, and Miami won't. But both of these teams are going to be solid next year. This is, uh, you take a look at some of the key guys that, that Wisconsin loses. You know, and Brett Bielema says we don't lose a lot in numbers, but we lose a lot in value. That's yeah. what he calls these guys, the valuable guys. You're always going to miss your seniors and some of those, but this guy will be back. John Clay says he'll be back. Hendricks will be back. So the bases for the offense is there, without a doubt, for Wisconsin. The defense is tough and really been tough tonight. High pass. Oh, Whoa. What a catch by Leonard Hankerson. They could have used about five more of those so far tonight. I thought that one was sailing into an yeah. interception in the secondary. Watch this grab. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, Aaron Henry was just waiting back there, camped under that thing to get the interception. Harris, Steve Bott's got another one complete. This one, LaRon Bird. And again, remember, Aaron Henry is in there right now because of Maragos being out with the, uh, the injury. And Aaron Henry has been on the sideline most of the night other than special teams. So uh, Maragos not patrolling the middle of that defense right now and a big play for Miami. Quick strike and you never know. We're down in two minutes. Harris flares it out. Nice throw. Javaris James getting out of bounds and getting the first uh, down inside the 30 to the 29. <laughs> a quick out and another first down so all of a sudden Miami comes to life in the final stages of the fourth quarter trying to make something happen here they get a touchdown and a onside kick to Corey Harris is in his last five Corey Harris is in his last six but that was a very short game Collier he got hammered by McFadden on that crossing pattern Miami used their second timeout here. So down to 127, but also down to the 14 yard line of Wisconsin. Second and six, more importantly, 127 and one timeout left for Miami. Harris going to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Collier, 14 yard strike, and there's life, or at least some wind left in the Hurricanes. know the folks that were booing as Holly was talking about earlier and those that are out in the parking lot are going where was this a little bit earlier Bosch are in for the point after and it's good well, one of the key things about that whole drive that was different than what happened the rest of the game no pressure on Ja'Cory Harris yeah Wisconsin did not get near the quarterback in this entire possession and Ja'Cory Harris was able to see set his feet and make accurate throws now the all-important onside kick coming up Wisconsin gets it they can just about end it because Miami's only got one way to stop it and that's one time out left so Wisconsin will get their very best out there on the front wall Matt Bosher will be looking for the best kick of his year to Corey Harris nine out of ten on that drive to get the touchdown a 79 yard march in ten plays there goes who was shaken up earlier is out there with a good hands team so is Borland so is Toon so is Kendricks and Graham Anderson all those 14 tight ends they have yep 
They got them all in one spot almost. So here is the play of the night. Wisconsin recovers it. They'll win. Miami gets it. We got football left. High kick. And it's still loose. Miami's got it, I think. They do. Bosher, the kicker. Was a great kick, first of all, by Bosher. Up high. And it was not fielded cleanly by Wisconsin. They had the first shot at it. And the ball got knocked around and got fumbled forward by Mara Baragos. And Bosher comes up with it. And now, all of a sudden, Wisconsin, who got a little complacent on that last defensive series, is right back on the field and has to generate a little pressure on the quarterback. Look at this crowd. They're just both sides in shock right now. Harris. Flushed out of the pocket and dropped by J.J. Watt. Yeah. See, that's what they didn't have the last possession. They double-teamed Schofield on this play, and they left single blocking on Watt, and he got the tackle. Hankerson's going to trot out here as fast as he can, wide to the left side. Ja'Cory Harris is going back the other way, and it is almost intercepted by Jay Belay. That would have ended it. 55 seconds left. Miami one timeout. Third down and a whole bunch coming up. Once again, Maragos was out there for the onside kick, but he's not out there in the defense here at the end of the ball game. And he's kind of the quarterback of the defense in the back end. He is not in the game because of the leg injury. And so they're going to have to do it without him. Hankerson goes out. Travis Benjamin, who's always dangerous, is in there, but he hasn't touched the ball all night, I don't think. Harris scrambling around, trying to buy himself some time. And it goes to and Travis complete. Benjamin out of bounds. Borland with a little pressure. Forced the throw to the sideline. And again, we the whole possession. You said Ja'Cory Harris was 9 for 10, no pressure. Now, just about every play so far in this possession, there has been pressure from Wisconsin again. And it's a little tougher for the Hurricane offense. Well, you see his left foot came airborne as he was making the grab. Wisconsin facing a Miami team with a fourth down and 14. They need to get to the Badger 49 to keep the football game alive. Harris throws in and out of the hands of Collier. Wisconsin will take over. He had his man. If he throws it outside of him, it's a completion and a first down. He threw it behind his intended receiver, Collier, and Collier tried to reach back for it. Watch the throw. Instead of being out in front of his receiver on the out route, it's behind him, and he's not able to plant his foot and come back and make the catch. Devin Smith gave him just a little pop to make sure he couldn't hold it at the end of the play and you see the jubilation on the Badger sideline. And did you see that huge piece of turf come up when he tried to plant his foot yep. and come back for the football. It was not a good throw by Ja'Cory Harris. Well Zane will take a knee. And we're under a half minutes. So the Wisconsin Badgers who have made this almost their home, the stadium, for the last five years, and they mobbed their head coach after an embarrassing loss to Florida State last year in this game. They have come back and taken care of the number 15 team in the country tonight and do it impressively. Champ Sports Bowl champions for 2009, the Badgers of Wisconsin. Heck of a football game right down to the very end and right down to an onside kick and then right down to a fourth and long in Wisconsin holds and a very wet Brett Bielema is with Holly Rowe. Well, Coach Bielema, first of all, what was going through your mind?
mind when Miami opened up this game with that long kickoff return. You know what? They're a very good football team. Two good teams competing tonight. Thought our guys played really well, and our defense played their tails off. How do you feel your team responded after all of that? You know what? Uh, people all year long going into last season, you know, didn't think a lot about this team. And, uh, our guys battled back to get to 10 wins. You can tell your man, Mark May, he said we wouldn't get to three or four wins. I think 10's a lot more than that. And I know that, you know, as this game moves on, every team we lost to last year is back on our schedule. So we're excited about this opportunity. Great respect to Miami, but this is a great thing for our program. Thanks, Coach. Absolutely. Brett Bielema with his lucky red windbreaker wins the champ sports bowl tonight 20 to 14. The Badgers are victorious. Turn over to ESPN News for a post-game extra. And for live coverage of the trophy ceremony, you can log on to ESPN360.com. That's going to wrap it up from Orlando until at least a few nights from now. For Todd Blackledge, Holly Rona, and entire ESPN crew, Brad Nessler saying so long from Orlando. The Wisconsin Badgers, the champ sports bowl champions. Sports Center is next.